You like using building thinking classrooms, but you're not sure how to bring it up into the upper levels on some of those tougher topics? Stick around, we'll talk about it. Hi, welcome to Hayes' World of Math. And one of the things that I always get asked sometimes is how do you take tougher topics, particularly if those are things that you as a teacher have only been lectured at? And so when you start getting into those, you know, some of the advanced algebra or algebra two topics, pre-calculus, um, that sometimes is hard to kind of come up with new ways to tackle. So I thought what I would do is go through and talk through some ideas about, I'm going to go back to logarithms and how I would introduce those, um, give you some of my thoughts and how I would build out the lesson. And then hopefully if you have any questions, go ahead and click down below. Obviously, I mean, comment down below, let me know what's going on. If there's topics you want me to hit, do that. Hit like, subscribe, send it to your friends. All that other good stuff that you hear every other YouTuber say. Okay, so if we build out like this, one of the things I'm going to go through and do is I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to do a warm up, and you could actually probably do this at the board. It kind of depends on your own personal preference style. I would just do typically the lesson before this is just writing things in terms of like bases. So you know, have the kids either in groups or by themselves solve questions like this. Again, it's just going to kind of, again, link the two together. Um, you know, 27 to the, I don't know, x minus 3. I mean, whatever ones you have, you probably have a book full of these examples. Have them do that, get comfortable with it. And then from there, I would send them up to the boards. Okay? And so, when I got to the boards, the first slide that I would show them is this one. Just the definition of logarithm. I don't know if I would necessarily tell them what log was. I would just say, we're going to, here's a new log, or here's a new operation. And the only definition I'm going to give you is the fact that I can rewrite that as an exponential equation. I would have them write it down at the boards. I'm going to keep this on each of my slides that I go in the future on this. I like to tend to do that if they're on the board. You could also do this on separate sheets of paper that you have up on each station. However you do it, you can obviously bend this to the way that you like to do it. When I get into here, my whole goal is to kind of build some comfort for them, okay? We're trying to get them to just kind of interchange between the two. And so one slide that I would have them do, or one thing I would have them do is I would say, okay, 4 is equal to log base 2, 16. And I would just say, all right, rewrite that. So they go through and they scribble, scribble, scribble. And then I would go through and I would do it again. Another slide, I would probably, just for kicks, do something with a negative exponent just so that they don't forget about all of those things. So I might do, um, let's say, negative 2 is equal to log base 3 of 1 ninth. Something like that. And again, they're going to convert it back down into this. You could also do a couple where you're going to go in the other direction where I'm just going to simply write down, you know, 5 to the third is equal to 125. How would that look in logarithmic notation? Is it a high-level thinking skill? No. But again, we're not trying to worry about building high-level thinking skills at this stage. We are just trying to get them comfortable with the notation. Okay? Thinking skill comes on the next one. I would now start to go in stuff where I introduce variables y is equal to log base 5 of 125. And again, I wouldn't say solve for it. I would just say rewrite it in exponential form. They come down here, and hopefully they take the next step on their own. And if not, you could obviously easily just stand from the cross and say, hey, group 5, what would y be on that one? And just leave it at that and go on to the next one. You just leave it hanging. Because again, remember, part of your goal is when you're talking to the students is that you're just going to ask them questions back. Okay? Your goal isn't to tell them what to do. And I would continue to do a couple of these back and forth and back and forth. Okay? Because what that will do is it will help them seeing, oh, wait a second, I can start to solve out for missing parts. And that's kind of what we're going to go for. And that would be usually, as I said, getting used to the notations the next lesson. And then from there, you can go on the next day and build on properties. So that would be my first couple of lessons. Now, depending upon your class, you may want to extend it a little bit. 
I would probably at this point, again, I would have talked around to some of the different groups, and then I would probably have the kids come back, and then we'll start to kind of more formal, you know, put some of the more formal academic language on it for them. Okay. If you have any questions about stuff, throw it down in the comments. If there's topics you want me to see me go through, throw them down below. Hit like, subscribe, comment, or I already said comment, do that. A um, couple of things. This over here is a video that hopefully of mine that you will like and find useful. Up over here, you can go ahead and hit subscribe. And other than that, I will see you next time. Talk to you soon.